The story of Deacon St. John and Sarah Irene Whittaker is a story among a thousand other stories. What makes their stories lovable and memorable is the fact that both despite external interferences still manage to be together. And even after they were separated in a zombie apocalypse, they still managed to find each other in the end. Hailing from the west side of the world, Deacon was born in Farewell, Oregon. But not much is known about Deacon's childhood, but he had a father whom he lived with before he passed away when he became a young man. As a young man, Deacon enlisted himself in the U.S. Army in the 10th Mountain Division and went on a full tour to Afghanistan, which Deacon hated every minute of. And the reason was when a mission gone wrong, en route to mazar e sharif the fourth largest city in Afghanistan, a group of Taliban ambushed Deacon and his squad of nine with RPGs which hit the Humvee Deacon was in, sending it tumbling down into the Hari River. Fortunately, Deacon got out of the Humvee and one by one, he pulled out the bodies of his squad mates to the shore of the Hari River, after which he never enlisted for another two. And now sad, depressed, and suffering from PTSD, Deacon went back to Farewell, Oregon and worked as a mechanic in a shop run by an older man named Jack, who was also the leader of a motorcycle club called the Mongrels Motorcycle Club, which later Jack extended an invitation towards Deacon, which he accepts. And this invitation was like a godsend gift to Deacon, because after he joined the club, he found himself a brother in arms as William Boozer Gray, who was another high-ranking club member alongside Jack. Soon, Deacon and Boozer were inseparable to the point where both of them referred to each other as brother. And because of this, Deacon overcame most of his sadness and depression, but only the PTSD remains. And if you are wondering what was Deacon's PTSD, then it was fear of water, and that's why Deacon cannot swim in the game. But now another story was about to make way into Deacon's life. Sometimes after, a research facility was established in Iron Butte, Cloverdale and was named as Cloverdale Research Facility, which was established with a purpose to do research on rare plants growing in that area. And sometime after the establishment of the facility, a young intern by the name Sarah Irene Whitaker was invited to work there. And that's how she met our biker boy Deacon St. John on a lonely road in the middle of nowhere. The first encounter was awkward enough but both of them had a charm to their personality that made their chemistry just perfect. One was an oddball, the other was full of life and together they were just meant to be. Sometimes later Deacon and Sarah started dating each other and on their dates Sarah would sneak up from her work time to time to spend her love days with Deacon talking about her research and acting all smug about it, and some days to ride a bike with Deacon. But one night, Deacon took Sarah to a waterfall to surprise her with his marriage proposal, to which she agrees, and then we see them getting married with only Boozer as a witness. Since Sarah's parents did not like the idea of her marrying a biker boy, and from Deacon's side only Boozer came as he is the only family member left to him now. Everything was going fine until zombie apocalypse hit farewell like a storm. Thousands of freaks everywhere the eye can see. And our trio were trying to escape this mess until Sarah gets stabbed by a kid and she was losing a lot of blood. Desperate to save her life, Deacon sends her off with a newer chopper and stayed behind himself to help Boozer escape farewell as well. But things were bad and Deacon and Boozer later went to the neuro camp where Sarah was supposed to be but instead found the camp was overrun by a horde of zombies. Deacon checked every body he could find to see if it was Sarah but to no avail and so Deacon and Boozer assumed she was dead. Two years have passed since then and we see Deacon and Boozer working as bounty hunters and call themselves drifters who still wore the colors of their mongrel motorcycle club. Deacon worked as a bounty hunter for camps run by Ada Tucker and Copeland on the north side of Oregon. Time went on as Deacon did errands but one day, Deacon saw a Nero chopper flying and decided to chase it and found out that they were doing some experiments on the freaks. 
when suddenly a horde of zombies descended on them and they had to abort their mission, leaving behind radio equipment which Deacon steals it and finds out that O'Brien, the person who took Sarah onto the chopper that night on the roof in Farewell was still alive. This gave Deacon a ray of hope that Sarah might have survived as well. So he made contact with O'Brien and O'Brien made a deal with Deacon that if he helped him then O'Brien will try to find out about what happened to Sarah after her surgery. Deacon continued with his scam errands. When O'Brien contacted Deacon, he asked Deacon to go on a snoop around in other neural landing zones and put a tracker on each helicopter and record every conversation the scientists on the field were saying. And for this, O'Brien told Deacon that Sarah was shifted to another camp but that also was overrun by these freaks. Devastated by this news, Deacon thanked O'Brien for saving Sarah's lives that night and leaves. Later, while working errands for Iron Mike, leader of the Lost Camp, uh, leader of the Lost Lake Camp, Deacon suddenly remembers that his wife worked at Cloverdale and had a clearance of some sort, and contacted O'Brien again to find out about this clearance stuff. And well, O'Brien tells that Deacon was right and that his wife had a level 4 federal, federal clearance and she is somewhere in Cradle Lake camp but due to the area being a no-fly zone, Deacon had to find another way instead. So Deacon asks Iron Mike on how to get over the Tilson Pass to which Iron Mike puts a condition that Deacon never returns and the next early morning, Iron Mike rode with Deacon to show him the way over the Tilson Pass and leaves telling Deacon to follow the mountain road and he will reach the crater lake. So Deacon rides alone till he reaches Diamond Lake Camp where he meets Captain Curry and when Deacon sees Captain Curry wearing Deacon's ring that he gave to Sarah, he was convinced that Sarah was nearby so he volunteered to join their camp. Now Captain Curry took Deacon along with him to track some thug and seeing Deacon's tracking skill, Curry introduced him to the colonel who swore Deacon into their camp and then the colonel took Deacon to meet with his lieutenant like Lieutenant Weaver who was working on a napalm molotovs, Lieutenant Whitaker, Deacon's wife. And they make up afterwards but then Deacon asks her to leave with her. She refuses as she was working on something so instead she asks for Deacon's help and run errands for her instead. So Deacon ran some errands for his wife like getting yeast, supplies, equipments and bringing in live newt specimen and when she injected the newt with whatever she was making every cell in that newt's body exploded to which Deacon was impressed at first but when he saw Sarah frustrated over the newt dying he realizes that she was not making a bio weapon but instead a cure. Just as Sarah was having the thought of giving up, Deacon tells her to dust herself off and try again, just like how a supportive husband would do. So Deacon and Sarah decided to go AWOL in order to pursue this plan because Sarah has been lying to the colonel about making a bio weapon. Instead, he has been making a cure. Deacon once again contacts O'Brien to pick them up from their camp, but bad luck struck the couple once again and they both were captured only this time Deacon was sentenced for a hanging. But Captain Curry released Deacon and asked if Deacon would join him to ride east but Deacon wasn't about to leave Sarah behind again. So Deacon goes back to Lost Lake camp, gets Boozer and other people's help and storms the militia camp while everyone was busy fighting each other. Deacon snuck inside the militia camp where the colonel was having a New Year's Day party and well, Sarah, being Sarah, put a hemlock plant inside the colonel's tea, poisoning him to death. And like that, the fighting ended and later Deacon gave a speech and rode with Sarah alongside with him to Lost Lake Camp, where now they live happily ever after. Or is it? Until O'Brien calls up Deacon once more only to tell him that the infected freaks are evolving in an exponential rate and the higher-ups in Nero knew this. 
and O'Brien, showing his infected face, told Deacon one last time before he leaves that they are coming and there's nothing that he can do to stop them. And, to, and this concludes the story of Deacon and Sarah. Until the next video, I wish you all a happy new year and may this year be a blessing to all of us.